Yeah, this is me doing anything but clean the garage like I should be doing right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. I know I haven't talked to you in maybe a little bit about two weeks. It's been, uh, if you can hear it, I'm still fighting off the last remnants of a flu. Actually, my second of the season, which is rare for me. I'm usually good for one flu a year, and that's about it. Uh, but amongst the holidays and a short Christmas vacation, uh, I've just been enjoying the last few weeks of the year. Kind of put eBay on hold, put the store on vacation, still making some sales. But I think like most of you, sales during this time of the year, the days leading up to Christmas and right after are usually pretty slow. However, um, kind of just to one more time drive it home, is that it doesn't matter how many sales you make, uh, in a day is the quality of those sales. I probably only had about off the top of my head, maybe 10 sales, 10 or 11 in the last seven days. Yet I still sold almost a thousand dollars in merchandise because three of those sales alone accounted for almost, uh, $600 or so of it. So again, it's not about how much you sell. It's the quality and the profit on what you're making. Thought I would go over my numbers for 2019 and also use this for anybody who's new to the vlog to get you an idea of what my business model looks like, um, how much I'm selling, how consistently I'm selling, what I'm selling, how I'm selling it. And if there's anything in my business model that you think would be helpful to you, then I invite you to stay tuned all through 2020. And this channel is only going to get better. I've got a lot of ideas. Finally get down to doing daily content, still working on this disaster, uh, but that will be out of here hopefully before the 1st of January, because I'm raring to go for 2020, and I want to do it in an organized and slightly less than I'm used to chaotic manner. All right, let's kind of zip through this. I pulled my eBay results for my two stores. Between the two stores, and this is going off of some eBay numbers and some of my own database numbers, total gross sales for the year was just about $43,165, or an average of just under $3,600 a month in gross sales. My goal for 2019 was to average $3,000 a month in gross sales doing this part-time, so I definitely achieved that goal and surpassed it by a healthy amount, by an extra 20% just about. And um, that's the average over 12 months. I look at things long-term, some of those months I was selling four or $5,000. Other months I was under 3,000. I wasn't worried about it as long as the average over a time period got me exactly where I wanted. Um, you know, I've mentioned it before. I don't like to overreact to small blips and anomalies. Um, I trust my model. I trust my business. I trust myself. And I let things, you know, fall out and adjust when things did not, do not go the proper way for an extended period of time. You can't control when and how people are going to buy stuff. You can only control what you're doing. Number of sales total between the two stores, according to eBay, was 1,514, or approximately 126 items sold per month. And I was listing anywhere between 100 and 150. So my actual total inventory is down uh, lower than it has been for the majority of the year, somewhere under 400 items. And I just throw that out there because if one of your goals for 2020 is to get X number of items listed on your store. Remember, it's not a bad thing if you can't reach that, if you're listing things and they're continually to sell. Um, you know, if you can get to a thousand items next year, that's your goal. Make sure you're doing it because you're increasing how many items you're getting into your inventory. You're spending more time listing. If suddenly you're doing the same amount of work and your listing count is growing, are your sales going down? You know, um, not having a lot of items because they keep selling is a really good problem to have. So think about it in those terms. And just doing the math on those numbers there, that makes the average item sale price about $28.50. I'd like to get that a little bit higher in 2020, but I'm not sure what, maybe $35, maybe closer to 40. Um, I have to think about that and see if it's realistic or not given my current uh, business model. So far with one day to go in the year, um, I only have 11 days the entire year where at least one item has not sold on my store. I know some people make a big deal about, you know, I haven't had a sale for two weeks or I want to have a lot of sales. Well, my business model so far this year has given me these numbers. And if those numbers are something that you think would be beneficial to you, then I encourage you to watch, look at the things I sell. Um, if you like these numbers, this is what I do day in and day out when I'm working on reselling. 
So that's what you're gonna see in the videos coming up. Based on my reporting, I can see $8,270 went to shipping costs. That's uh, post office, FedEx. It doesn't even include boxes and packing materials. I didn't put supplies in here. Um, I'd say supplies this year probably spent a good six to six to eight hundred dollars on supplies between boxes and bubble wrap and tape and things like that uh ebay fees so far this year were about uh four thousand five hundred and fifty three and if you subtract those two costs from my gross sales uh it comes right about thirty percent of everything i made went to fees and like i said that's what i always say is if you're gonna try and figure out off the top of your head in a store how much you're gonna make from selling an item um, just take 30% off of whatever you expect the total to be, whether you're doing free shipping or not. So if you're just selling it for $80 with $20 shipping or $100 with free shipping, still $100 bucks you are taking in, 30% of that roughly is going to go to fees and postage. And then obviously equate for the actual cost of the item. So um, yeah, it was kind of cool to see that's what I've been saying for the past year and uh, it holds true and I'll maybe try and find some ways to reduce shipping costs on there for next year as well. And also on that postage note, um, I may actually be working hard to keep it the same way because if you don't know, postage rates are going up in January again. Uh, the information's on the US uh, post office website. I'll try and link that below too if you wanna find the actual chart of what's going up. Um, this is just the cost of business, this happens. Uh, it can be frustrating, hopefully, when things go up by like 20 or 30 cents, uh, and I don't say this to be like, you know, rude. It, I hope it's not destroying your business because if 20 or 30 cents is destroying it, uh, your biggest issue is not the increase in shipping costs. You need to look at exactly, you know, what you're selling that 30 cents is damaging your bottom line. I know things add up, but uh, that shouldn't be causing such a huge crisis for you. And look at it in perspective. In 2011, when I really got into reselling for the first time, a four, uh, four ounce first class package anywhere in the United States, any zone, was $1.87. Now uh, a first class four ounce package for me is $2.68. And that's if it's just hopping next door to California. If it's going to the East Coast, I'm paying like, you know, three sixty three or whatever it is, or two ninety eight. So um, be happy because you'll be telling somebody in another eight or ten years, oh yeah, when I was selling on eBay back then, Postage was only 450, now it's 825, who knows? So um, don't go up in arms, it's something you can't control. Spend that energy and that frustration um, towards something you can work on and improve and increase those numbers. You can see we got some new Shelby going up. Got a couple of these uh, from Costco. They were on sale for, I think, $45 a piece. They're five level shelves, nice and long, um, solid. A lot of electronics are going to go on there, and one of these is going to be built half high like you see right now, and that's going to become an area where I'm going to do more filming. I'm pretty much going to kind of move that stuff that's sticking out over to this area, so this portion of the garage will be all business related. The workbench will still be there because there's no way I'm moving that, and some of that stuff over on the end will stay, but then a car can park in here again, and I'll have everything consolidated in one area with a great spot to film once the lighting gets better. But the reason we're out here really quick is I wanted to talk about the best sale of the year. And you've been seeing these in videos recently um, because they've been selling. I made that video probably about three months ago and I'll link to it somewhere in the video that was, a did I make uh, $1,900 in 10 minutes? And I'd encourage you to watch that video if you wanna hear the whole story. But the quick summary for those who have not seen it yet was, I was on my way to get an oil change and again, I forgive the stuffiness, guys, and had an appointment for it. And I was on the way there, driving past a Goodwill. And again, I felt like, oh, I don't have time to stop. But I have such fear of missing out when it comes to this. And usually it served me well that I popped in, spent about 10 or 15 minutes in the store. But I came across a pile of these guys. And as you can see, they were all $5.99 each. Um, I thought maybe at first it was just generic printer ink. I realized I did a little bit of research. These are card print ribbons, even though it says it right there, for printing on like badges and security things, just, you know, your name or pictures and such. And I looked it up on eBay and saw really high prices. So I cross-checked it with Amazon and I saw those were about $150 a piece brand new uh, on Amazon. My original intent was to ship them into Amazon, but I wanted to see how they did on eBay. So long story short, 
I bought 20 of those at $6 a piece. There were 14 of that blue box style and six of this green box, which ended up only being worth about $30 each. But those blue ones have been selling consistently for me, depending on if they get caught up in a sale or not, for between $108 and $125. So as of right now, I bought 20 of those at $6 a piece. So um, what's my original investment? About $130. And I've sold all but three of them so far for total gross sales of $1,380. Um, and obviously, there's a little bit goes to shipping and fees and such. But for every single one I sell, I profit somewhere between um, $80 and $90 on the expensive ones. So that $130 purchase ended up netting me over 10 times my money so far. And those last three should sell really soon. So overall, I think that was my best buy of the year. Um, just overall, the whole scenario, going there when I didn't plan to, doing the research, finding something like that. And that's what happened to me last year before I was vlogging. I was going past a Goodwill a day when they had 50% off. It was like 6.30 in the afternoon. I go, there can't be anything good. But I popped in there and I found some sealed in the box Panasonic cordless extension handsets, similar to the ones you've seen me sell in previous videos, but these are brand new factory sealed in the box. And for some reason, they were selling for between $250 and $300 each brand new. And the store had five uh, at $6.50 each. So that carried me through the end of last year. And again, that was a point where I wasn't even planning on stopping. You know, I wanted to add in there about those printer ribbons that the point of that little story wasn't that, oh, look what I made or, um, you know, ink is good. I mean, obviously, ink can be worth a lot of money. But that was something where... I didn't know what they were at first. Even if you didn't have any clue what they were, those are brand new factory sealed items. You pull out the eBay app, you open up Amazon, you do some searches by the brand name. If there's no UPC, you look up this kind of stuff that is factory sealed because even if you're someone who does not touch electronics, you're a clothing seller, um, you're a very uh, collectible seller, something like that. If you walk up and down an aisle and you see things that are factory sealed in shrink wrap and you can just punch in a barcode, scan a picture, type in a name, and I can't tell you how many times I found electronics like that, that Goodwill has no idea how to price, where I'll pay $7 for a very expensive Netgear gaming router that sells practically instantly for $180, $250, and it doesn't require any technical knowledge whatsoever to branch out into something like that. And I want to say this, and it's not meant to come off in any kind of rude way or insulting, but if you want to stick to what you're doing, if you want to grow your business, but you're afraid to branch off into different areas, or you want to say, I'm only a clothing seller, I'll never do this, I'll never do that, it's perfectly fine. But if you do that, you have to be sure you're going to be okay accepting your limitations. And by limitations, I mean possibly the total amount of money you can make. For me, as you saw, I sold over $42,000 this year. Um, I'm not going to run the data right now. Uh, I want to get this vlog up. But I could tell you off the top of my head, easily 60 to 70% of that is electronics. Um, and that's just something I enjoy selling. I could sell clothing again. I just don't enjoy it. And I accept that limitation on my possible income. So it's okay if you don't want to do something, but be willing to accept the limitations that it's going to bring to you and be okay with that. And I'm not saying that like, oh, you're a bad seller if you don't do, you know, all these different things, but make sure what you are choosing to do and your goals line up. If your entire eBay store sold right now, how much would you make and how much could you, how fast could you go ahead and restock your store? Think about those things because if you have $10,000 online and you want to sell $50,000 in a year, you got $40,000 more worth of merchandise to find and get listed. How are you going to go about doing that? Those are the things to think about when you're setting goals. So while I have had quite a number of sales over the last two weeks, um, we're just going to catch up to this past weekend. Uh, over Saturday and Sunday, only had about $125 in item sell, but there definitely are um, a good mix of what I tend to sell day in and day out. If you look at the chart, you can see my last really good day was on Sunday, December 22nd. And that was actually a day where I made three sales for the whole day, a board game 
and then a couple of both kinds of printer ribbon. So three sales that day netted me almost $570 gross, and that was my highest day for all of Q4 and one of my highest days of the year. Um, and that just, again, kind of shows that, you know, okay, I only had three sales that day, but those three sales were better than a day when I sold 12 items in this quarter. So what did sell this weekend? Um, actually, four remote controls, a mouse, a CD, and a board game. And uh, that's pretty much it. And that's a good selection of the hodgepodge that I sell. Um, if you look at the remote controls here, sold these two Pioneer CD player remote controls, model CU-PD069. Sold to the exact same person, so I'm assuming they're either a business or a reseller or somebody who repairs these, who knows. Had about a dollar in each of those. They both sold for $29 each. This Russin, Russound, sorry, UN0-LRC1 learning remote control. These I got for 50 cents, and I thought they were just a junk buy in the end. But this one, um, these were listed in September. This one ended up selling for $15. So right there we have uh, just about $75 in remote controls. And I have a fourth one that sold for a karaoke machine for $15, which the person then asked if they could have free next day shipping. And I asked them, I said, did you mean you want this tomorrow? Because it would cost me more to ship than the item cost. Otherwise, you'll be receiving this on um, Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. And they haven't gotten back to me, so I'm guessing I'm probably not going to close that sale. But that's okay. No big deal. Logitech G302 Daedalus Prime Gaming Mouse. Uh, that only took about a month to sell. Paid a dollar on that guy. Sold for $22.95. Definitely tested it out. Made sure um, the mouse moved freely. Uh, the scroll wheel was... Not sticking, wasn't dirty, all the buttons registered. That's something you can just simply test by plugging it into your own computer and uh, just using it as you normally would. Sold this Mattel Balderdash board game. This is actually the European version, and I didn't know that when I bought it. Paid $3 for this guy. Sold for $35. Bucks. Took about four months. Um, as one of those weird items where I looked at it the other day and I said, huh, I wonder if that's ever going to sell. And sure enough, it sells the, the next day. And then last but not least, just for seven bucks, this uh, 2018 Andrea Bocelli audio CD. This was actually part of a buy of about 14 that I got. Um, it was like, I think, Andrea Bocelli, uh, Post Malone. I think there was some Backstreet Boys, quite a very eclectic mix. But Salvation Army was selling all their CDs for 50 cents a piece. I grabbed all the ones that were brand new. I actually lauded those 10 Post Malone CDs together. And one person bought them for 40 bucks. So I uh, bought about 15 CDs total from that buy, in for $7.50. The Post Malone's already made me back all my money and then some. So I'm still clearing about uh, three bucks or so on each of these CDs, and they're super easy to list. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog there for today. I actually got out a bit this afternoon, did some sourcing, and I think I'll save that for a video uh, in the next day or two. It was... Uh, some electronics, uh, some video games, books, just a whole bunch of stuff as usual. So, actually kind of spent more of the evening too. Um, well, it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but we got the new shelves going up. Uh, things are moving out of the old space. That stuff is all coming over here. So, uh, probably not going to be done by the first of the year like I was hoping. But it uh, really feels good to get a move on that. So, guys, take a moment now to wish you guys a happy new year. I uh, hope you're looking forward to 2020. I hope it's great no matter what you do. Stay safe on New Year's Eve. Have a good time. Look forward to the future, guys. Until I talk to you in the new year, stay tuned, stay positive, and keep hustling. Take care.